Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionalis continuing our series about bleeding and coagulation. In the previous video, we have started talking about acetyl salicylic acid. Today, we'll talk about the medical or the clinical uses, also known as indications of acetyl salicylic acid, the wonder drug. With that being said, now let's get started. It's part of my series about bleeding and coagulation. Please watch these videos, especially the arachidonic acid pathway, because aspirin is all about inhibiting the cyclooxygenase in the arachidonic acid pathway. As you know, acetyl salicylic acid, aka aspirin, is antiplatelet analgesic, antipyretic, and anti inflammatory, one of the non steroidals from the willow tree. And I've told you the difference between small A and big A aspirin. The mechanism of action irreversibly inhibits the cyclooxygenase. How does it inhibit it? If it's called acetyl salicylic acid, it will cause acetylation of this enzyme. Now it's inhibited. No thromboxane A2, no platelet aggregation. When there is no platelet aggregation, primary hemostasis, there is no blood coagulation, secondary hemostasis. Because if one causes two, and if you inhibit one, you don't get two. Does aspirin inhibit cyclooxygenase one or cyclooxygenase two? And the answer is both. The arachidonic acid pathway, aspirin works by inhibiting the cyclooxygenase. When there is no cyclooxygenase, there is no thromboxane A2. When there is no thromboxane A2, there is no vasoconstriction and there is no platelet aggregation. How about the prostacyclin? Now watch my previous video and I've discussed the prostacyclin and the aspirin effect on it. Why is aspirin bad for asthmatics? Because if arachidonic acid is not going to be converted into prostaglandin G2, thanks to the cyclooxygenase inhibition, all of the arachidonic acid will be converted into leukotrienes, which make the life of asthma patients hell. Does aspirin inhibit cyclooxygenase 1 or cyclooxygenase 2? And the answer is both. Is aspirin antiplatelet because it inhibits cyclooxygenase 1 or cyclooxygenase 2? And the answer is cyclooxygenase 1, because only cyclooxygenase 1 leads to thromboxane A2, which causes platelet aggregation. I can ask you a third question. Is aspirin bad for your stomach because of inhibition of cyclooxygenase 1 or cyclooxygenase 2? And the answer is COX-1. How do you eliminate aspirin from your body? It's not the juice cleanser. It's called zero order elimination. And I've talked about it in the previous video. Clinical uses of aspirin. Antiplatelet, analgesic, antipyretic, anti-inflammatory. First, let's talk about antiplatelet. Prevents myocardial infarction and the recurrence of myocardial infarction. Great. How? Because it inhibits the platelets. When there are no platelets, there, are, there is no blood coagulation. Good. When you inhibit primary hemostasis, you don't get to have secondary hemostasis. Acute coronary syndrome, which is an umbrella term that includes, are you ready? Unstable angina. Non-STEMI, which stands for non ST elevation, myocardial infarction, or no ST elevation. Then we have the STEMI, ST elevation, myocardial infarction. Collectively, we call them acute coronary syndrome because we love to classify stuff. That's what science is all about. Prophylactic for atrial arrhythmia, such as AFib, atrial fibrillation. What happens in atrial fibrillation is your heart is supposed to pump blood. In atrial fibrillation, your atrium just tickles the blood instead of pumping it, which is crazy. Why? Because when you don't pump blood, blood will stagnate, called blood stasis. And according to this nice guy called Rudolf Furkow from Germany, blood stasis is one of the Furkow's triad, which will lead to, yes, you guessed it, blood coagulation and thromboses. So atrial fibrillation can lead to blood clots, so give aspirin to prevent that. Back to acute coronary syndrome, we give, we give TPA plus heparin plus aspirin called combination therapy. Because you thought that only McDonald's had combos, doctors have combos as well. Except our combos are very expensive. TIA and stroke. Ischemic stroke, not the hemorrhagic stroke. Why not? Because hemorrhagic stroke, you are bleeding. You want to give aspirin, which will make you bleed if you already have hemorrhagic stroke? That's called stupid. Don't do it. Only ischemic stroke. 
prophylactically, which means before the stroke. If you know that this patient, like he's an old guy, morbidly obese, had myocardial infarction before, had atrial fibrillation, everything, like all of the risk factors of ischemic strokes are there. Give aspirin before he gets a stroke. Prevention is better than cure. However, aspirin for strokes is weakly therapeutic. You can give aspirin after the stroke, but it's not the main stream of treatment. You need like more aggressive stuff. If you suspect a stroke, do a non-contrast CD scan of the head. Why? To differentiate between ischemic stroke, which you may give aspirin, and the hemorrhagic stroke, never give aspirin and never give TPA because the patient is bleeding, he is a stupid idiot. Next, aspirin is prophylactic for antiphospholipid antibody syndrome or APS. When you have APS, we use two lows low dose aspirin and low molecular weight kin heparin lmwh why to prevent thrombosis and subsequent miscarriages multi infarct also known as vascular dementia which has memory loss in a stepwise fashion which is different from alzheimer because alzheimer is gradual loss alzheimer is like this gradual loss of memory Crutzfeld Jakob disease is rapidly progressive. It's like this, rapidly. Multi infarct, aka vascular dementia, is stepwise. It's like this. Tuck, 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 tun, 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 tun. Grandma doesn't remember my name. Next, grandma doesn't remember her name. She's not oriented to person. Next, grandma is not oriented to place. Next, grandma is not oriented to time. Next, grandma forgot how to use the key to open the door. Next, grandma forgot how to walk. Stuff, 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 stuff like that. It's stepwise fashion. We call this multi infarct or vascular dementia. Aspirin is good for this. Why? Because it's vascular. There are infarctions. Same thing. Infarction in your brain is the same thing as infarction in your heart, pathologically speaking. And look at this guy, Rudolf Ferkow of the Virchow's tribe. Ferkow. It's called Ferkow, not Virchow's. He's German, respect the language. Blood stasis, endothelial damage, hypercoagulability. And he was the first guy to say leukemia, and that's where we get the term. Um, I mean, look at this guy, look at this. Old school pair of glasses, old school suit, and old school beard with no wax, hashtag all natural. Thank God Ferco was not a millennial. Because if he were a millennial, man, this hypercoagulability is just too much for me. Just too much. I don't like a dry yet. I'm super sensitive to number three, by the way. I can't imagine my life without dry shampoo. What can I do without dry shampoo? Uh, maybe shower? Uh, I am a millennial, by the way. It happens to the best of us. By the way, if you have trouble memorizing medicine and you are a visual learner, try this website called Picmonic. Picture in a mnemonic. It's absolutely brilliant and I cannot describe it in words. And for example, the warfarin, you will see in on Picmonic, the war fairy. Vitamin K is the Viking king. And as you know, warfarin inhibits the vitamin K dependent factor. So this fairy will just shoot her bazooka at the vitamin K and destroy him. All of this you will see on Picmonic. The link is in the description. It's absolutely brilliant. They are not a sponsor of the video. I just like these guys and I thought I would recommend those guys for you. The link is in the description and you should do this. They are good for all of medicine, especially pharmacology, microbiology, and genetic diseases. Let's continue. Clinical uses of aspirin, aka indications of aspirin. Peripheral arterial disease or peripheral vascular disease. We have narrowing in the arteries in the periphery, hence peripheral arterial disease. And this is not to be confused with center because center is the coronary artery in your heart and the cerebral artery in your uh, brain. Coronary artery disease and cerebrovascular disease respectively. But this is a peripheral artery in your extremity, for example. So when you have peripheral arterial disease, you get these symptoms. Intermittent claudications pain and it's intermittent it's very bad gangrene is a possible complications of pad what do you do when you have a patient with pad aspirin and celostazole and you can add verapamil it may help next aspirin is antipyretic pyrex pyrex mean it's like thermal it means heat that's why a certain type of glass that goes into the oven without explosion we they call it the pyrex it's a company they call it Pyrex because pyretic means fever. 
they got from there. It's all Greek and Latin and stuff like that. Okay, rheumatic fever. Why? Because aspirin is antipyretic. Rheumatoid arthritis. Why? Because aspirin is analgesic, anti-inflammatory. Osteoarthritis. Because aspirin is analgesic. How about anti-inflammatory? There is no inflammation in osteoarthritis. Maybe mild, but it's not the main thing. It's a mechanical arthritis. Erythromyalgia or ET, and I've talked about this in my video about essential thrombocytosis, one of the myeloproliferative disorders, and made a beautiful video about that. You should check it in my playlist called the Hematology. Next, again, uses of aspirin. Don't forget antiplatelet, analgesic, antipyretic, and anti inflammatory. Headache, yeah, baby, it's analgesic. Headache is pain in your head. Jerish Herxheimer reaction. You know, syphilis. Is called by that tryponema pallidum. When you treat cephalus, how do you treat cephalus? The great penicillin. Penicillin cures patients of cephalus most of the time. However, some patients have a reaction to penicillin called the Hergerich Herxheimer reaction. This penicillin will destroy that tryponema pallidum, those ugly, nasty bacteria. Then when it destroys them, the antigens are released in your blood causing this reaction. It's self-limited, nothing to worry about, it's gonna be okay. But if you have a patient with that reaction, you can give aspirin. This great aspirin is protective against gallstone formation. You know, the fat, fertile, 40-year-old, 54 freaking kids, female with fair complexions. Those are your risk factors for gallstone disease. It's an ammonic, come on. Then, aspirin is protective against colon cancer. It can be used in lone AFib, which means the patient has AFib alone, with no diabetes, no hypertension, no other risk of thrombosis. Give aspirin alone. But uh, shouldn't I give warfarin, perform ablation, and shock? Shut up, go shock yourself. It's a lone AFib. Give aspirin alone. And leave the patient alone, don't be such an interventionalist. Next, aspirin can be used in Kawasaki disease in kids. But like five minutes ago, you told us that aspirin is not used in kids. But I've also told you that there is one exception, and here's the exception, Kawasaki disease. But aspirin is dangerous. Didn't you hear about Rye syndrome and this liver damage? Yes, I did. But did, did you hear about coronary thrombosis in a kid? Shut up. You should think like a mature person and balance the risk and the reward. Does the benefit overweigh the risk? In cases of Kawasaki disease, the answer is yes. Perfection equals paralysis. If you left it to the engineers, no car would leave the assembly line ever, said Dan Pena. If you left it to professors, no patient would leave the hospital. If you left it to web developers, no website will ever be ready. But the website must be robust and the landing page must be like this and the link should be like this. Like, shut up, have you heard of Craigslist? Craigslist was designed by like, a, I don't know, like a kid. Very amateur design, very basic stuff. And it's the 10th most visited website in America. So shut up and get to work. Next, aspirin can be used in Mondeau's disease. Superficial thrombophlebitis, inflammation of the vessels over veins with thrombosis. Sorry, here's the mistake. It's superficial thrombophlebitis of the breast and anterior chest wall, and you can use aspirin. Next, you can use aspirin with niacin, aka vitamin B3. Why? Because niacin can cause flushing, and aspirin will reduce the flushing of niacin, and I really don't know why. And next, we have gout. Why use aspirin in gout? One, because there is pain in gout. Aspirin is analgesic. Next, gout can have some, it's an inflammatory arthritis, so aspirin is anti-inflammatory. But it's not, again, it's not the mainstay treatment of gout, but it can help. Aspirin can be used in temporal arthritis, also known as giant cell arthritis, but don't forget to give the steroids, of course. The steroids is what saves the patient's eyesight, not the aspirin. The aspirin can help, yeah, it can, it's, got, it's like uh, analgesic, can help with the pain, but again, it's not to replace steroids. Okay, by the way, I have a great video about temporal arthritis. Just Google medicosis temporal arthritis and you will find it. Kawasaki disease, risk versus benefit analysis. Are you sure you wanna give aspirin to the kids? Okay, what is the risk? Rise syndrome. What is the benefit? Protection against coronary artery thrombosis. Does the benefit 
outweigh the risk? And the answer most of the time is yes. So give aspirin and give intravenous immunoglobulin. By the way, I have the Perfectionals Ultimate Notebook about lymphoma on my Patreon. It's 100 plus pages and it's 100 plus megabytes and it has 20 cases about lymphoma. And if you were to get it now, you get 25 bleeding cases. Quiz time. When not to give aspirin to a child with Kawasaki disease, and please don't say allergy, this is not the answer that I'm looking for. So this is the exception of the exception. Number one, don't give aspirin to kids, except when they have Kawasaki disease, but most of the time, except when there is, let me know the answer in the comments. You can get the answer now at patreon.com forward slash medicosis for just a dollar. Plus you get many other notes for just the same dollar, so it's a deal. Thank you so much guys for watching. We'll talk about the side effects of acetyl salicylic acid in the next video. In the meantime, please subscribe and hit the bell to get notified. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 95 cases on Facebook. And to get my Dropbox links about notes and cases, all of my notes, all of my illustrations that I'm doing for these videos are available in PDF forms that you can download. Patreon.com forward slash Medicosis. Thank you so much for watching. This is Medicosis Perfectionals, where medicine makes perfect sense. Medicine and sense to words that don't come together like customer service. Anyways, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.